Hello gamers, well I'm back from a busy day at the EGX show in London and I got a chance to see, feel and play some of the great games coming to our screens this Christmas and into 2015 and here is a small taste of what I could film. This video is all about the feedback from playing these games first hand and some behind closed doors presentations. This video is not going to go into vivid detail of each of the games that I played first hand. I'm going to do that on more detailed breakdowns which I'll post links to in this video as I put them up. This is more about the info and tidbits that I found on my busy day. First up, I would like to thank the epic guys over at the Activision stand and the Advanced Warfare for helping me out when my crutch was really struggling and I was having a big problem queuing for the massive queues for Advanced Warfare. They really helped me out a lot. Also, the Warner Brothers guys at the Batman Arkham Knight stand. The behind closed doors presentation of that game was amazing and the chair they got me for the queue really helped out a lot as I was really struggling. But I got to play some great games and hopefully I can fill you all in with some of the great hands-on information that I got and some of the chats with the devs whilst I was there. First up, I played The Order 1886, which sadly and expectantly was the same demo from E3 this year. There's not a lot more to say on the content of this demo other than I absolutely loved it. Based on the most recent trailer, we already know that this game has moved on immensely since this build was made, which is probably at least 8 months old now. But that said, the game and the controls felt great in this early demonstration. The thermite gun felt weighted and heavy just as you expect and accurately felt like a prototype weapon that you would expect it of this time and era and this generation. Lacking the ultimate precision and lack of any kind of recoil you get on games nowadays, it required far more skill and dexterity to use and hit your targets accurately. And this made the whole thing far more satisfying and believable within the realms of the world and the story. Playing through the small and limited mission, you had a chance to defend yourself in a small shootout near a distillery, which you then have to later destroy and save your comrade as he's shot in the lung. This then turns into a small section where you have to defend as you drag your comrade back into the room, shooting the enemies as they appear on the edge, getting some tasty headshots and some quick kills. I really enjoyed this section, even if it was brief, which sums up the demonstration quite accurately. You kind of zip through it in a few minutes and you're already done before you know it. What it does show very well is the amazing attention to detail. There were some small issues with shadow aliasing and flickering, but again this is a very old build and it still looked stunning and better than anything I've seen so far. The seamless integration between cutscenes and game is all there and present. You do not know where it hands over and nothing changes. Looking at Galahad in-game, he looks identical as he does in the cutscenes you've seen running. Even though the demonstration was brief, what is apparent is the strong story and script writing in this game along with superb voice acting work. Galahad and Lafayette have a humorous exchange at the end of the demo which characterises them perfectly. Mon de Dieu, who built this fucking town? Dead ends everywhere! Quite the shortcut, brilliant. Lafayette, monocular. I can't stress how much I enjoyed playing this demonstration, as brief as it was, and I really am looking forward to more information and getting my hands on this game even more very soon. Hopefully the amazing guys and girls over at Ready at Dawn will be sharing more information with us soon. Anyway, on to what we hit next was Bloodborne. Now Bloodborne was a very brief demonstration as well and a tough nut to crack. Being limited to only one playthrough at a time, this made it quite difficult to try and achieve my challenge of finishing the demonstration in one go, which I didn't achieve unfortunately. I was able to get to the werewolf battle but bit the big one whilst trying to hold the two of the buggers off. Now the game is exactly as you expect, tough, unforgiving and absolutely amazing. The atmosphere and character design of the game is stunning. When you start the demonstration you have the choice of four classes to choose from. Three of them look like the demonstration you've already seen and one of them has a long crow-like nose with tassels. I chose the broadsword hammer method and went in that way with my heavy duty attack. This made my attack slower and my defence harder, but to offset this, the damage it caused was far greater. Working through the game, as expected, it's quite clear that timing and manoeuvrability are key. The enemies have a strong and repetitive attack fashion, but you don't know how often they're going to slice. If you try and attack them mid-attack and they get there first, they are pretty quick and they hit you with an unrelenting grace. They will smack you down and beat you quite quickly. You have to time your attacks quickly and get in and get out. When you're fighting multiple foes, this is when it becomes difficult. Using your shotgun to give yourself a little bit of space and then rolling out of the way to attack them. As expected, the triangle button gives you an energy boost to give you a fighting chance and you can pick up pebbles in the area to throw and distract other enemies away from the hoarding crowds. This is your best bet to try and get through the demonstration if anyone gets a chance to play it. 
going up against three or four at once is just going to end up with you dying and getting frustrated and the game really does draw you in my only gripe from the game was not being able to play it long enough one go just isn't enough the only other thing is the anti-aliasing as expected from the demonstration at Gamescom which this is exactly the same build is quite weak with some aliasing evident all over the game in the texture work and some of the edges. Also the frame rate can be a little bit juddery and I'm sure that this is two of the things they're going to work on immensely. With a nice smooth 30 frames per second presentation I'm sure this and the anti-aliasing will be fixed quite soon. The game itself is exactly as you would expect, a strong, unforgiving, relenting game. The visuals are stunning with some great detail on volumetrics and light reflections and it certainly doesn't pull its punches on its difficulty level, giving you no easy ride to get through. If you haven't played Demon's Souls and you're used to fast frantic games like Devil May Cry, this is not the same. I need to stress this. You feel slow, you feel lumbry, you feel weighted and you feel grounded and that's the whole point of the game putting you in a position which makes you tense and anxious as you play, feeling that any minute you could be killed and the game will end. And that is the whole point of this game. That foreboding nature is within the makeup of the game and this exemplifies it perfectly. I cannot wait for this game to launch and I really am looking forward to it. I'm sure that this will satisfy many PS4 owners and also make many people buy a PS4. It really was a treat. Conscious that I'm stepping into far more detail than I originally wanted to, I'm going to skirt over some of the other details as we go through these games. Next up I played the Halo 5 Master Chief Collection. Now this game is exactly as you'd expect. This and some of the other footage you just watched is all thanks to Gamerside's hands-on show floor videos they got from Gamescom and TGS. Simply because their quality is far better than mine and they were allowed to film whereas I was not. Most of the filming I've got for you guys is me trying to hide the camera away as I'm watching the scene. So it's not the best but it's the best that I can do. Hopefully there will be some better quality footage available soon. So apologies for the poorer quality, but more importantly, it's all about the information that I got out of this. Halo was a great example of what you can do when you get things right. The aim was clear, 1080, 60 and updated textures. And this is what they've done. The frame rate is completely rock solid and it does make a huge difference. Playing this on the show floor, it felt really smooth, really crisp, really clean, exactly as a first person shooter should feel. The maps felt just as they did before when you played Halo 2. That was the only map you could play on this demonstration here. I really felt swift and fluid. Bringing back all the joyous fun you had when you originally played Halo back in the day, this looks like it's really going to deliver that experience for a lot of Xbox One owners that may have enjoyed that game and want to get back into it like myself, or maybe new to the franchise and want to get themselves up to date until they jump into Halo 5. It is an amazing looking game and really does look great up against the other contenders just because the amount of work they've done on the textures and the lighting really helps. And the frame rate is another thing that will make this age a lot better. Due to the fact that it runs at 60 frames per second, it does feel like a next gen game. Due to the fact that many console owners are quite used to running 30 frames. And once you jump into a first person shooter like this, that's open, that's fast, that's frantic, it does make a huge difference. I am really looking forward to this game launching at Christmas and it's a big one in Microsoft's Christmas launch library. Along with Sunset Overdrive which I also had a chance to play on the show floor. This pyrotechnic filled blaster was a real hoot to play and it took a lot more skill and dexterity to play with the grinding aspect having to jump in the air and time the X button whilst landing on the edges which means you can't just jump around and let the system automatically latch you onto the telephone poles, edge of buildings or railings as you needed to. This added a lot of scope to the game and it was a visually very pleasing. Even though it's running 900p or 1600x930 frames per second, it does look very clean and very crisp and this is helped a lot by the art style. It definitely had the feel of Jet Set Radio on steroids and it really was a fast frantic game and certainly one that I hope will sell well for Insomniac. It does feel very different from the normal third person shooters with the enemies being very grotesque and disgusting like a tango filled zombie but the game does play really well but I found the action really fun and it took a bit of skill to play it wasn't just as simple as it looks on screen and I'm certainly looking forward to having another go at it very soon. The amount of on-screen alpha and particle effects that went on at any one time was also very impressive, with some of the explosions and weapons completely filling the screen with particles, fire, explosions and disruptions, and that really is quite an impressive achievement. And allegedly Insomniac used a 10% GPU payback to add more of this effect to the screen, and I for one agree that is the best option. Trying to push to a native 1080 and lowering the, the quality of effects and lowering the frame rate in the instance for me would be a complete loss. 900 is not a problem when it looks this good and this chaotic. Certainly one that I'm going to keep on my shopping list.
Next along was Dragon's Age Inquisition, which was running on the Xbox One on the stand. Apologies for some of the shaky footage you're about to see due to the fact that I'd already been told off for filming here, so I tried to get as much as I could. One thing that was impressive on the demonstration is the game was running, I can confirm, at 60 frames per second. It definitely had dips from that frame rate with some of the lighting and particle effects causing it to drop, but it wasn't a massive problem. One of the things I asked though was on the stage show that it was running fraps on the screen and I asked some of the devs on stands and they gave me very perplexed looks on their faces while I was asking that question. So at this point I'm not entirely convinced it wasn't running on a PC. Before people jump in and say well, it was running fraps it must have been. This is not true, it could have most likely been running through a PC split to feed all of the screens from the central box and therefore fraps could have been running over the top. I would be surprised if it was running on a PC due to some of the dips on the scenes that I saw but overall I can honestly confirm that this game was definitely running 60 frames per second and the devs on the stage were telling me that it was 100% running on Xbox One machines. I have no reason to disbelieve them and certainly looking at the game I can totally believe it was. Now whether it's 1080 or 900 at this point I cannot confirm for definite because it's hard to tell on the screens and the setup and the lighting and the time you get on stage but it certainly looked very close to 1080 so I wouldn't be surprised if on both Xbox One and PS4 this isn't a 1080 60 game, or at least unlocked. All in all, this looks like it's going to deliver an RPG game to see us all through the Yuletide season, and I am really looking forward to sitting down and getting some decent hands-on with this game. Next up, I've got some hands-on time with Drive Club, and boy oh boy is this game visually impressive. I cannot stress how impressed I was when I actually had a chance to sit down and play this game first hand. The lighting in the game is absolutely stunning. They really have got lighting bang on. It looks like real life. I cannot stress this enough. The Norway map, one of the ones you could choose of the three, you had three basic cars, the Aston Martin, the Ferrari, I can't remember which one it was. I managed to get two goes on two of the tracks. The one you see here, which is an American desert track, which looked absolutely stunning as the light faded and it got lower but also the Norway track which is snow covered and the light and the crisp detail on the textures really blew me away. I also can't stress enough, just like Forza Horizon 2, that the 30 frames per second with the superb motion blur makes this game feel ultimately smooth. No video or anything you've seen so far of this game outside of first person does this justice. It also highlights one of the other issues that I saw at the stage was they had so many screens that were set up incorrectly. I saw games with crushed blacks, I saw over sharpened images, I really wanted to just lean in and correct some of the screens that were ruining these games. And unfortunately Drive Club was another screen where somebody took the sharpness and turned it all the way up to 10. And this affected some of the motion blur on the screen which you could clearly see making it look a bit artifacty. So I cannot go to, into too much detail on the visual side of this, certainly not comparing it to the other game that I played there and one that I played at home at leisure, Forza Horizon 2 which was very visually impressive also. I can tell you now by seeing both of these games side by side, certainly Drive Club beats Forza Horizon 2 into a cocked hat when it comes to visuals. Drive Club looks real. Everything about the game looks realistic. There's points where you think you're watching a GoPro video or an actual race camera on screen. It really is that stunning. Forza Horizon 2 is more of a hyper-realized game. After playing it briefly, it reminded me of Metropolis Street Racer having very tough rivals on track, and certainly it was not set at an easy setting unlike Forza Horizon 2. Racing through both scenes, I managed to get a best position of second place in the Norway race and third place in the Americans, and they are very, very tough rivals indeed. They don't bash you out of the way, but they certainly chop you off, grind you up and push you to the edge, and they do not make many mistakes. They're not perfect, they do make mistakes, uh, usually into a corner when they crash and have a pile-up. The game's control system from the control pad is great and it feels very smooth indeed, and I really am looking forward to getting a proper play of this game at home when it comes out in the next two weeks along with Forza Horizon 2. Now the footage you're seeing here is from my playthrough at home of the demo that was released a couple of weeks ago. Forza Horizon 2 certainly stands up to Drive Club very well. On the visual side of it, it is highly impressive and very realistic, but there are certainly situations where you can tell the difference in art style and what they're trying to achieve. Forza Horizon 2 is hyper-realized, like a Michael Bay Transformers type film with loads of light bloom, everything emphasized, the motion blur is massively exaggerated, but it all feels very smooth and superb fun. And this is the one thing that will stand out most from when you play this game next to Drive Club. Drive Club certainly has the amazing looking visuals and the track side of it, but the closed nature of the tracks and the fact that you can't go open world is exaggerated greater if you've only just come off of playing Forza Horizon 2. As you can see, you take tracks all over the place, ride on road, off road, in the scenery, in the grass, and this is something that does make the game feel far more free-flowing. 
Visually, there is no comparison. I can tell you now, even before I do a head-to-head, -head, Drive Club is the better-looking game. But it's not as if it's going to change the world and make you hate the fact that Forza looks horrible, because that's certainly not true. Forza, as you can see, looks absolutely stunning and has no problems with its silky smooth frame rate and superb motion blur. Again, proving that if you do it right, you don't feel the massive surge from 60 to 30. The cars have an exaggerated weight to them when you're driving around, and the sense of speed and immersion in the world is really something that's quite impressive. The game doesn't have any issues with frame rate, from what I could tell from the playthrough at home. It keeps a rock solid 30 frames per second. Aside a few issues when you're driving and loading the game, which look like simple hard drive loading issues on the game, and the control system fits into the game nicely so you don't feel as if you're losing out on that responsiveness. The cars are weighted, like I say, and that's realistic. When you're hanking around a corner at 60 miles an hour or plus, the car isn't going to hold a straight line. The other aspect that I think is really impressive is the visual side of the game. You can see here the rain effects look superb and it's something that they've achieved very, very, very well. The only downside to that is the horrendous spray from the car tyres in front as you chase them. It looks more like a smoke effect, like the car's tyres are on, on fire. And it really looks at odd with your own car on replays with the water spraying off your tyres realistically and far more accurately. The screen reflection from the road as you drive by and the light reflection on the cars and the screen space reflection on your bonnet and the areas as you drive up is all very impressive and a notch up from Forza 5 now that the actual icons above the cars are occluded on the reflections making it seem far more realistic. All in all this is a very impressive open world racing game that certainly looks to deliver a lot of fun for anyone that's into racing games just like Drive Club. Either of these are going to tickle your fancy. If you're not into driving games at all, then no matter how stunning and pretty it looks, or no matter how open world and free it is, it's not going to change your mind. That said, look out for my double review and head-to-head -head of both of these games in the next two weeks after launch or just before when I get my hands on them and give you guys all the information that you need. Hopefully you guys will enjoy it. Next up was Project Cars, which I got a chance to play on both the PS4 and the Xbox One. And coming off the back of Drive Club and Forza, these, this game unfortunately looked a little visually bland. It does have a great day and night cycle and it does control very well and very smooth. Both running a lovely 60 frames per second presentation with the day and night cycle running through the track as you played. The lighting and shadows and dynamic shadows of the headlights in the cars are all very impressive. But unfortunately you do feel the dip coming back from these two of the games which look far more flamboyant and visually pleasing. Now this is on the back of a 60 frames per second presentation of this game on the back of the other two games both being 30. But that said it does make a difference when you're standing and playing these games. Now Project Cars is an amazing game with a lot more scope in its realism and its simulation style. I can confirm that the PS4 version was running 1080 and 60 frames per second and the Xbox One version was definitely running 60 but it may have been running 900p, in fact I'm pretty sure it was running 900p. But as always the devs wouldn't give me a straight answer, they just said it was running 1080 they think. But looking at the screen, it certainly wasn't. I'm pretty sure it was 900, but I'll tell you what, it makes hardly any difference at all and was the best contrast of the difference between 44% resolution, you have to stand and stare, and I'm pretty good at noticing these things, as you guys know, and I'm telling you now, it was hard to spot the difference. 960 is a pretty good achievement, I think, for the Xbox One and the PS4 version. That said, I think a lot of people who are into in-depth simulation and control system, this game will win out, simply because it has far more depth. We shall wait and see. Next, I lumbered over to Dying Light running on the Xbox One. Looking exactly as you expect from all the screens and trailers you've seen online, this game is visually very pleasing indeed, with superb texture work, lighting and a huge array of zombies on screen and weather effects as you play. There's points in the game where you feel completely overpowered by the amount of zombies and the end is nigh, but the parkour system pretty much allows you to climb, traverse and get over everything you see in front of you, making the game feel very open and free, like a first person Assassin's Creed game, you, are, you can climb and run wherever you see and wherever you go. This makes the whole action and combat very intuitive, as you can run and jump over or under zombies as you run through, not always taking the lumbering smacking or shoot approach. One of the things that I did notice though, it running on the X Xbox One is that the game was running at 30 frames per second. It was most likely running 1080p, I'm pretty sure it was, but it was running at 30. Now I couldn't find it on the PS4, I'm not saying it wasn't there, but I couldn't find it. But most likely what they've done is the same as Tomb Raider Definitive Edition and taken the time to upgrade the visuals and run them with all the visual effects and flair at 1080 and run the PS4 version at 60 frames per second or unlocked with the occasional dips. At this point I'm guessing, I don't know, but I can pretty much guarantee you that this runs at 30 on the Xbox One and 60 on the PS4 and PC. 
Next I went over to the sleeping dog stand to see this first hand in person. Since I was there I've obviously seen the trailer has now come out for this game but what I can tell you first hand after speaking to the development team on the stand was the game is 1080 and 30 frames per second on both consoles. PS4 and the Xbox One or so I was told. I didn't see the Xbox One version running but I did see the PS4 version running which you can see in front of you here. Now I can tell you the frame rate is a nice smooth 30 frames per second and it plays exactly as you'd expect from the old PC version. The texture quality is the same, the character models are the same, the reflections on the streets are the same but it does come with all of the DLC content and it is a real hoot to play and a lot and lots of fun. That said, I did say this to the development guy on the stand having a 30 frames per second game that looks like this coming out on the back of GTA 5 just around the corner Assassin's Creed Unity and other such games that really look next gen this game I believe is going to struggle irrespective of the amount of DLC content that's added in having an option to unlock the frame rate which I did mention was something that they had in the pipeline but they said they had dips from that frame rate from 60 down to 30 that were quite intense so I did say at the time that I would still have done that and unlock the frame rate because a lot of people would still have preferred that rather than having a locked 30 and just give them the option if they don't like it to lock it down a la Second Sun, a la Killzone and other such games that have the same option. That said, it is a great game to play and I really enjoyed this on the last gen machines and the PC that I had it on. But if you haven't played this game then I would certainly recommend picking it up. If you have played it then I can't really recommend it on the back of playing through it at the stage show. It was good but it's not as impressive and it certainly looks dated already before it's even launched. And I know that sounds really harsh and I'm really sorry to Square Enix but as I said at the stand I think they're aware of that and the fact is that they're going to sell it on the back of all the additional content. This game didn't port itself over to these consoles for free but I don't think this has had a very long time in the development cycle. The build that we were playing was a bug debug version and it certainly had issues. I managed to crash through the ground and the camera appeared below me. Another guy to the left of me got it to pause and crash out. It was a debug version. And I would still say that this game is very much still in the flux of development. I would expect probably very large day one packs if you buy this game at launch. And I'm still umming and ahhing about picking it up just to do a head-to-head -head and review of it on the PC version. We shall see later on. Next up I popped over to the Lords of the Fallen stand on the PS4. This was running at 1080-30 but as you can see on the right hand side with the oversaturated lighting scenes in the boss battle, the frame rate came a little choppy and I would say it was dipping under 30 or certainly having frame inconsistencies juddery. Um, outside of that the actual lighting and texture quality was very good and very high. Lots of volumetric lights, real time light sources and dynamic lights all over the place. The physics and the character animation was very strong and very good and it certainly does feel like dark. Dark Souls with a very unforgiving nature again on the enemies. The only problem I had was with the camera system being very close in the demo with the corridor sections you were in it could be hard to see where you were and therefore you can lose yourself in the battle on screen and then you're frantically rolling and flicking around on the control pad trying to find out where you were and this was compounded by the laggy controller system on the PS4 which suffered on a couple of other demos as well. With the PS4's being outside the Bluetooth sync to the controller was out of line so what you ended up with was quite a laggy controller. I spoke to the dev at the stage and he said that's to do with the weight of the character I was playing which I agree with because you can tailor your character with heavy armor heavy weaponry which slows you down but I took myself back to being bare bones torso naked using just a sword and I still suffer from this lag connection I don't think all the demo stages were doing that but I had to take the demo pod that I got at the time so that was slightly unfortunate that aside and the camera issues I found it a little bit of an issue the game does look like it's got a great aspect of RPG and upgrading paths and the lighting as I say is superb in this game I just hope they work out the issues on the frame rate and the juddering that was going on which was a little bit disconcerting but outside of that it was good it just wasn't great and on the back of this and Bloodborne I think this literally looks very nice but I think it's gonna have a tough battle fighting against Bloodborne for the honor of which one can be the new Dark Souls of this generation moving on to Far Cry 4 running on the PS4 this was probably one of my games of the show it was absolutely Absolutely a barrel of fun. It looks great exactly as you've seen on all the videos so far there is no difference whatsoever running a solid 30 frames per second at 1080 it looks superb with lots of visual effects lovely particle and explosion
explosion effects as you blow up the trucks and other enemies in the game. I love the fact that the enemies are a little bit more intelligent in the way they run and hide from you when you change your weapons, and you run around and try and shoot them and basically break through this camp. You had a few options on the demo. You could either go in with your gun and your rocket launcher or grenade launcher, or you could jump on the little helicopter thing and fly overhead and try and shoot them out that way. The game was superb and I really found it a lot of fun. It basically is Far Cry 3, but it's massively improved with lots of extra additional features and loads more enemies on screen. Everything feels far more realistic and it does look stunning. I must admit the resolution and certainly the AA solution is great. There's hardly any jag is evident and it's a very clean looking game and it suffered from no hiccups of screen tearing or issues that I could see. This is going to offer up a great experience this Christmas and I cannot recommend this game enough. If you liked Far Cry 3 I am sure you are going to absolutely love this game I'll be interested to see how it comes out on the Xbox one hopefully with another 1080 30 presentation but it might be sub 1080 as well but I wouldn't be too surprised if it's close on that and certainly the PC version you're gonna get the best of what your machine can muster I'm looking forward to this one immensely I then managed to grab a go on Shadows of Mordor again on the PS4. This was a superb game and it looked beautiful. High quality textures, a lovely 1080 crisp display and it's 60 frames per second. The game really delivered on all aspects of that. It felt fun and it was a lot of game to play and the demo was very short. You had a few minutes I must admit but you can see here there was a lot of people mulling around and you always felt like they were hanging over your shoulder watching what you were doing. Using the bow and arrow to jump in and use your wraith abilities to climb on board the actual orgs, you could control them to smash out enemies on screen. And the frame rate felt very smooth to me. I did notice a couple of dips on the heavy areas, but it was really minor. I'm overtly sensitive to these kind of things, so I do look out for them as well. I would say when you're playing the game, you're probably not really going to notice it. So on the PS4 you've got a 1080 60 presentation and I'm assuming the Xbox One possibly 900 by 60 frames. It depends what they go for. All in all this game looks like it's delivered on its promise of that demonstration and I really wanted to play more. Unfortunately like many games you do not get long on the stage here so you literally have to play what you can and then move on. So Shadows of Mordor is a game that I recommend after this play and it certainly has delivered on the 1080 60 promise the developers gave us early on. I can't vouch for the Xbox One at this point but I wouldn't be surprised if 900p and 60 is the target they aim for. Outside of that I had a look at a lot more PC stuff, some Oculus Rift which was very popular on stage and a lot of people queuing for that and then I got some behind closed doors viewings of Assassin's Creed Unity and Batman Arkham Knight and also The Witcher 3 which was an amazing presentation and they really, CD Projekt really took the time to make everyone feel welcome. The developer on stage was really funny and witty from Poland, he spent all the time speaking to the crowd and talking through the demo you've already seen on my previous videos but in more detail being played live by a girl from the development team who was very very good at the game herself. Now this demonstration was fun, I found it really enjoyable and had a chance to speak to the, the developer after the session to ask him a few questions. He basically said that he worked on the PC version specifically and the aim for the console version was to get as close to the PC version as possible. That said, I think obviously the frame rate is going to be an issue when you're running it because even on the demonstration on stage it certainly wasn't running 60 frames per second. The consoles are definitely targeting 30, he did say that and that's understandable with the resolution quality and the visual effects in this game. We shall see what kind of power you need to muster some PC but it is certainly going to be a tester because they are pushing a lot of the effects very hard just like the Witcher 2 did unless you've got something like dual 780 Ti SLI and setup I wouldn't imagine 60 frames per second at 1080 or north of that is something within the ballpark of most people's PCs mine is very much included and my upgrade is very much soon coming to run this anywhere near the level I think it needs to be ran I'm sure you'll get an excellent experience whether you've got a decent PC or any one of the now gen consoles. The Batman Arkham Knight demo was absolutely stunning. It was so good I cannot stress how impressed I was with the open feel of the game and the amount of combat and flow between the Batmobile and Batman. The way it linked together and how seamlessly it made the control system, the Batmobile certainly is made to feel part of Batman's arsenal. It's no more than using a weapon or a batarang in the game. It really fits in really well. This video has dragged on long enough and I'm conscious that I'm going to go over the boundary so I shall be doing another video specifically on my preview of Batman and I will include all of my feedback and information from this behind scenes closed doors demo that I, no one has seen publicly yet that is for sure. I also got to see a behind closed doors of Assassin's Creed Unity and this was the same demonstration from Gamescom running through the Notre Dame de Paris mission as you saw from Gamescom. 
This was running on a PC, that is for sure. They ran it with an Xbox One controller on the stage, but instantly after the demo, I went up to the developers and asked them and basically said that was a PC version. And they looked at me for a second and then went, yeah, it was, yeah. You could tell because the frame rate was unlocked and it did hit 60 at some points, but it certainly had dips and the resolution was far higher and far crisper. What you see before you is the trailer released yesterday for Assassin's Creed Unity, and I can vouch that what you're seeing here is most definitely Xbox One footage. Having viewed the PC version on stage, I can categorically confirm this is Xbox One footage. You can tell by the aliasing and the distance and the difference in the frame rate. I would imagine that even though the hope is to get this at 60, after looking at the demonstration from the PC version, I would doubt the consoles are going to hit that. So I would expect a 30 frames per second presentation, or at best an unlocked frame rate with an option to. But this isn't the usual Ubisoft tact, so I would still be surprised. I would imagine the Xbox One version would hit 900p at best and maybe even 792 again like Watch Dogs and 900p for PS4. At this point I wouldn't be surprised. The game looks CPU heavy and it certainly has issues all over the place. In fact the demonstration they even said this is an early version so don't mind any bugs and stuff and this is understandable but the amount of glitching and flicking from the characters in the game and some of the texture popping in and out and lighting popping in and out I would imagine the two-week delay is that they desperately need that to push this game to the end. And I would imagine that the development team is being stressed to the hilt to hit the Christmas launch that this game absolutely must hit. So, unfortunately, there may be patches after this game gets released, a la Black Flag and Watch Dogs. As it stands at the moment, the Xbox One footage you see here is clearly not 1080. It probably looks sub 900, but at this point it could be just running loads of weak AA and FXAA on it. I do not even know the solution they're going to run. If they do run anything, they need to run the one, the one they're running on Far Cry 4, because that is a stupendous AA solution, and it was one of the cleanest looking games I played outside of The Order and Forza Horizon 2. I also got a chance to play The Evil Within and Alien Isolation on the Xbox One, and they were both absolutely stunning. Alien Isolation looks absolutely incredible with the depth of field effect being flickable by the debumper on the pad so that you can either flick between focusing the foreground or the background with the motion sensing. It had atmosphere coming out of the wazoo. It literally immerses you so well and you feel the panic attack of the alien when it crawls around and you see it. The survival mode that they had the game set on, you get extra points for playing the game by not using motion sensors or not using the gun. But the tension and atmosphere this game creates really deliver exactly the kind of experience that I wanted to, to see. The resolution seemed a bit odd. I'm not even sure whether it was running higher than 30 frames per second as well. It was very smooth and very crisp and it looked visually stunning and this was the Xbox One version I was playing. So I would look forward to seeing this game when it comes out on the PS4, the PC or the Xbox One. I also spoke to the developer there about the sound design of the game and he mentioned the amount of work they put in as he was a sound designer. The amount of work they put into the game for the occlusion of the sound in the hallways, the sound of the alien banging around the Nostradamus, and giving that atmosphere effect as you play so that sound plays a big part of how the game plays. I was really, really impressed. The Evil Within was another good game that I enjoyed the demonstration of. Being able to upgrade your character was a little strange. By going to a mirror, you basically hold down a button and you get transported to this area where you sit in a large chair, and then you can improve your melee, your speed, and your defense by using points earned in the game, which was a little odd. The atmosphere was great, the lighting and the dynamic lighting in the game and the texture work was superb. There was some aliasing issues on the shadows and they were quite dithered and quite heavy on the Xbox One and the frame rate was definitely 30 but it had smoother parts when you looked up so I'm not too sure the demo was unlocked but I would imagine a 30 frames per second is their aim and hopefully they'll achieve it. And it certainly felt like a Resident Evil type game, very slow, very methodical and very scary and very atmospheric. So certainly if you're after a horror game, this looks like it's going to deliver on that score by having a lot more scope in the game than I originally thought. Certainly one to keep an eye on. Last but by no means least was COD Advanced Warfare which was a huge cube that I managed to get into in the end thanks to some help at Activision. This was just a multiplayer demonstration with up to the full team, I think it was 8v8, So, uh, but don't quote me on that, I can't remember now. Um, it was good, it was great, it felt and played like COD. Um, visually it looked very good, the multiplayer side of it looked nice, it wasn't amazing, it was definitely 900p because I got to sit down and look at it properly, um, but yeah it looks great, it moves great, it's 60 frames, it's got a solid feel, I didn't feel any lag on jumping in the game at all and it feels and plays exactly like COD 
with lots of verticality in the exosuit with you jumping around with the rocket having to double press the button to boost around but I really enjoyed it what is clear is they cut back obviously a lot of the post person effects in the multiplayer because they're pretty much turned off but it looked great and I'm certainly looking forward to getting my hands on this and the single player when the game launches later this year stay tuned for my in-depth breakdown review of this game when it launches in November all in all I had a superb day at EGX and I really really enjoyed it I hope that I've given you guys lots of information here and I'm sorry if this video has dragged on but I wanted to cover all the big stuff from the games that I saw and all the big information that I got out of that whilst I was there. Again, stay tuned for more videos coming on the detailed breakdown of the Assassin's Creed Unity, the Batman Arkham Knight and all my other forthcoming videos on new games and new information coming out from now until next year. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the sub button or the like button as I really, really appreciate it and it helps me immensely. You guys and girls take care and I will see you soon on the next one.